SDR has become a pretty big thing in ham radio with the likes of Flex Radio. It is way more than a science project anymore. In this episode, I'm going to go over an alternative to the Flex up next. Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob, WV7W, and today we're going to look at the Sun SDR2DX. This is by no means a new radio. I had not even heard of this radio until my good friend David, AG7SM, told me about it. And he was kind enough to loan it to me so I could share it with you. As there really hasn't been much content presented on it. For awareness, I'm mostly going to be looking at this from the CW operator's point of view, since that is my mode of choice. Not to mention that there really hasn't been anything done on this radio regarding CW. The thing with SDR radios is they tend to be focused more on the phone and digital operators in mind. Rarely do we see stuff on either the Sun SDR or even the Flex from a CW operator's perspective. Now, Kyle AA0Z has done some stuff on CW on the Flex, so if you want to see the definitive search on the Flex, I cannot recommend Kyle enough. This is not intended to be a comparison between this and the Flex, but if you stick around till the end, I will go over some of the differences and my impressions of the comparison to the Flex. This is a 100 watt HF 6 meter and 2 meter transceiver. It has no display on it, so to use it, you need a computer connected via Ethernet. More on that in a bit. The software for the Sun SDR is known as Expert SDR2, and it is free and available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Now let's take a look at the actual box. The radio itself is actually surprisingly small. It's about six and a half by six and a half inches by four inches tall if you include the fan and the heat sink. Now, don't confuse that with the fan, the heat sink and the fan being optional. They're actually installed at the factory. The front panel is pretty spartan. It has the power buttons, two mic jacks, and a quarter inch headphone jack. The first mic jack, labeled Mic 2, is for an RJ45 connector mic, such as those you might find with the AC radios. The second, labeled Mic 1, is for an electric type mic, like those you might find on a computer headset. Now, you don't have to use a mic connected directly to the radio. You can actually use a mic on your computer. The back panel has a lot more going on. There are three antenna connections. These are mini UHF connectors, but they do supply an adapter cable that goes from mini UHF to PL259. If you want to use more than one of the connectors, you'll need to supply more adapters. I assume the reason they went with the mini UHF is due to the size of the box. The top two antenna connectors are for HF and 6 meters. The bottom one is for 2 meters. Next is the ATU connector, which is there for their proprietary antenna tuner. They do not provide pinouts to this connector, so I wouldn't plan on using that connector for other ATUs. The RX out allows you to take the receive signal from the ADC in so you can provide further offboard processing. The DAC out is basically the radio output before the power amplifier. So you could connect it to a transverter or external power amplifier. Then there is the power connector, which is an Anderson power pole type connector. Why can't more manufacturers adopt the power pole connector? Finally, to finish out, the top row is the reference connector for a high stability 10 megahertz oscillator. If you don't know why you would want or need one of these, you probably don't need it. Below the ATU connector is the ALC connector, which can be used for keying a linear amplifier. The external connector allows you to control external devices from the radio. The PTT connector allows you to key the radio with either a foot switch or other trigger switches. And the key jack is for a CW paddle or straight key. The LAN connector is to connect to your network. Strangely enough, you have to have your radio and computer connected via Ethernet to use them. 
it has kind of surprised me that they don't have a USB connector for direct control. Finally, there is the blank spot labeled GPS that is not used on this series of radio. To start using the radio, you have to set up the IP address so that it'll work on your network. And unless your network is set to 192.168.16 subnet, and most aren't, you will need to direct connect a computer to the radio with either a crossover cable or a network switch and set your computer's IP address to be something other than 192.168.16.200, which is the default address for the radio. You will then run the expert SDR software and go into the options, and then you can set the IP address to be something on your network segment. If all of this networking stuff is making your head spin, you may want to find your local computer nerd to help you out, or maybe the Sun SDR isn't for you. Let's fire this thing up and give it a go. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is the Expert SDR2 software that works with the Sun SDR2DX. Pretty clean interface. I think from the user interface perspective for the radio part of this, I think it is better than that of the Flex radio, um, at least the Windows version. I have not had the opportunity to try the Mac version which I understand is actually designed by the same guy that designed this software here. So let's kind of go ahead and go over it. So the uh, top button here connects the software to the radio. The radio has actually got power applied to it right now. Um, as soon as I do this, it will make the connection to it. And then we can go ahead and see the radio in action. So the uh, you've got the display waterfall display as well as the fast Fourier transform display right here one of the kind of cool things about this is that you can adjust where the noise floor is on this just by dragging this left side up and down kind of a neat feature and i do i do like that i think that's kind of a, a cool thing you can adjust the the height of the waterfall or the you know the fft um to your to your liking uh, ignore these noise things here. These are either solar panels or car chargers or something in you know near my house that is, they pop up now and again. That can be really frustrating. So let's go ahead and go over some of the settings on this. Up along the top next to the connection button is the second receiver. Right now we've got second receiver turned off. Then we have our attenuation and, uh, and gain, actually. It's both. So right now it's set at flat. Um, you can do minus 10, minus 20 dB, or a plus 10 dB gain to your liking. And then this is the band scope on and off. The antenna, we're on antenna 2, which is the out-of-the-box default for HF. Antenna 1 is the default for VHF and UH, or VHF. And VHF meaning two meters, because six meters actually falls on the HF antenna. Then we have our external power amp control. And then this is actually turns on our audio so we can hear it. So now you can hear the audio from the radio. And I'll go ahead and let's do a little uh, CW going on here. Let's see, and we'll pick this one. I'll go ahead and turn that off for a minute. These, this is your memory panel for the any memories that you might have in there. This is the volume control for the speaker output. This is the monitor for your transmitted audio. So if you're using a microphone, this is how you would monitor that uh, audio source. This puts it in transmit mode. So it'd be kind of like, you know, holding the push to talk if you're using phone or it'll just transmit a carrier if you're in CW. Uh, tune will actually send a tune at a, at whatever the tune power level that you set in the in the settings. Uh, this is your virtual audio cable, so you can route this to other audio sources on your computer. Uh, your squelch, um, muting, uh, your vox on and off for voice, break in. It I don't believe it has full break in, so it has semi break in, so you set the break ins timing. Um, you can also set your speed here. 
as well as you can set it with this control over here to the right. And then what your, uh, what your pitch is and some other settings. Uh, this is for voice processing for, uh, for voice audio. And this is line out to your sound card and recording. You can have it show spots on, the, I don't have it connected to a, uh, to a spot server, but it will show spots on the, on the uh, band scope here. If you happen to have, you know, stuff going on, you can see those just kind of flex does the same thing. Then on the next line is the, uh, if you wanted to play recordings that you then, uh, some audio mixing EQ. And then this is your actual AGC level, your power out level, and then your power out tone. And I believe that's the same for both, you know, if you're going to use CW, I think it, it's actually controlled by this one. The speed, like I said before, but this one shows different because it's down here, it's macro speed. That's if you're using macros. Like I said, the, the in, under the break-in, so that's kind of a little bit kind of confusing. So you can set your speed with, with this little dial here. And then you can, this is your microphone gain if you're, if you're doing phone. So let's go ahead and see what we can listen to here for a minute. The bands have been kind of in and out, so we may not get a lot of good, good signals. There's been a lot of fading today. Pretty weak. One thing is you got your uh, filter widths here. Um, so they're very handy and very easy to get to. And it shows you what the width of the filter is actually on the, on the band scope. And I think that's kind of handy. I do like that. That was a nice inclusion. It also, uh, along the, the index line here, has the S meter. So you can see it there as well as up top. And then let me go ahead and find an empty spot here, and we'll go ahead and throw out a CQ. I don't think we'll get anything, but we'll give it a try anyhow. Reverse beacon network picked me up, so although not coming in real, real gangbusters there, about 9 dB, so <laughs> it's uh, not the uh, best radio day here. But uh, I do like it better, I think, than the Flex, as far as one having the side tone audio in the software without having to do a bunch of stuff. That that I find exceptionally frustrating on the Flex. I don't know, maybe we get a little stronger signal here. See what we got here. We may have a POTA activation going on here. Let's see if we can get him.
Still got a little pota in there, so that was kind of cool. Just had Captain to sneak up. It sounds like uh, he wasn't hearing me nearly as well as I was hearing him, so. So that kind of wraps up the uh, kind of a real quick overview of the Expert SDR2 software for the Sun SDR2DX. So, as promised, here is somewhat cursory comparison to the Flex. I will start with the size. The Flex is huge by comparison at 14 inches wide, 13 inches deep, and six and three quarter inches tall compared to the Sun SDR, which is about six by six by four inches tall. Now you can get the Flex with either an installed or separate panel called Maestro. And I have to give it to Flex this is a beautiful panel with nice controls. The Sun SDR 2DX has no such option. Probably my biggest complaint with the Flex is the lack of CW side tone in the app. The Sun SDR does have a usable side tone in the app, so it pretty much goes without saying that from a CW perspective, I like the Sun SDR better. Now let's talk about the software for a moment. Flex only provides software for Windows platform, and it is free. Now, you can get Mac software from a third party, but it costs about $100. Sun SDR provides their software for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, all of which are free. The radio functions in both pieces of software are usable, and the setup and configuration of the Flex seems to be more user-friendly and polished. Now comes the ugly subject of price. Neither of these radios are cheap. If you were thinking that the Sun SDR would be cheaper, think again. The Flex 8400, which was just announced and replaced the 6400, is the closest to the S Sun SDR 2DX, and it comes in at about $2,500. The Sun SDR also comes in about $2,500 from Gigaparts, which is the U.S. retailer for Sun SDR. Now, even though there are things I like better about the Sun SDR, if I were going to recommend one of these, I would recommend going with the Flex, as it's a US-based company that I understand has outstanding customer support. It also has a larger following and therefore better community support. Now that I've had a chance to play with this radio as well as the Flex 6600M a while ago, I've discovered that SDR radios really aren't for me. Now let me qualify that. I'm talking about radios like these that require an application on a computer to use them. I'm not talking about embedded SDR technologies in traditional radios like my FTDX10, which has SDR baked into it. I prefer having knobs and buttons and a display on the radio. I think a large part of this is due to being primarily a CW operator. SDRs are great for those doing digital or even single sideband. I also see the appeal to those wanting to do remote operations. Again, this works great for sideband and digital, but not so much for CW. The work Elecraft is doing with the K4 may change all of this, as they are doing a lot to incorporate CW into the remote capabilities. Again, I want to thank Dave for lending this to me. Thank you so much for watching this. The positive feedback I receive from my viewers keeps me wanting to do more content. If you like this, do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, but more importantly, it lets me know that you liked it and gives me an indication of where I should focus my time and energy. If you have an idea for something you'd like to see me do, give me a comment below and I'll do my best to accommodate you. Until next time, 73.